So this episode is a follow-on from our previous episode, which was titled The Two Things You Need to Become Obsessed With. If you haven't listened to part one yet, please go and listen or watch part one first, because all of this episode will make much more sense to you when you do listen to part one first. There'll be a link to that in the top of the screen here somewhere. So go click on it. Um, and yeah, there we go. So, so we're talking about now the second thing you need to be obsessed with as an outdoor business owner if you wish to be successful. Now, today's advice and guidance does not come out of Rob and Mark just sucking their thumb and waving their fingers in the air and trying to brain dump what it is that could make you successful. This actually comes from the over 200 outdoor business owners we have interviewed this year and what it is that those people who are making epically successful lifestyles and epically successful quantities of money for themselves in the outdoors, what they are doing versus the things that people who are struggling to find enough customers, struggling to make enough money, so on and so forth, versus what it is that those people who are struggling um, are doing. So, um, as always, I'm joined today by, um, oh, who can you be today? Uh, the Admiral of the Fleet, the, the, yeah. the Field Marshal, the uh, Chief Entertainment Officer, and anything else of We Get Outdoors, my co-founder and good mate, Mr. Mark Hopkins. Welcome. Thank you, Mon Capitan. Um, after doing part one, um, without giving it too much away, uh, what was left whirring through your head? How good we were. Shit, we're good at what we do. <laughs> um, I think the thing that really <laughs> the thing that really left struck me was freaking hell, most business owners, and again, it's I'm not belittling it. We're really good at overcomplicating shit. And the second thing is that naturally we are really comfortable gravitating to something that feels really easy to us at the detriment of whatever it is that we want to actually achieve. We, and we go back into whatever's very comfortable for us. That, that is so very true. A mentor of mine once said to me, what do you least want to do in your business? And I gave them a list and he went, excellent. There's your priority list of all the things you need to focus all of your time, effort, and energy on. I was like, oh, crap. Um, yeah. and, and, and sadly, that one. that's it. Yeah, says, there's a wall made of concrete with spikes sticking out of it, and I walk straight into it and headbutt it. Um, yeah, uh, but the truth is, he was right, and it enabled me to sell my outdoor business nine years ago. Um, and along the way, I actually learned to love some of those things that previously I hated. Um, so yeah, so, so we're into part two now. Can we unpack that, Lil? Just, I think it's really important, just quickly, before we go into part two. Mm. What, what, why did you end up falling in love with those things that you hated initially? What made you fall in love with them? What was the journey you went on? So, first of all, I, I focused in and worked hard on those areas because I had a mentor holding me accountable and the only questions they were ever interested in is the answers relating to those pro those priority areas. That was the, the that was the, the first thing. So it was a, a degree of accountability. And this guy had a jeepers. He he actually worked for one of the world's richest men um, as his direct boss. Um, I'm not going to go into who, but that's actually what his day job was. He had a proper job. Hey? He was he was in terms of aspirations in the world of one day I'd like to earn as much as this person. Um, he was up there um, and, you know, he's a, a Christian. He was in the choir at the church. He's got a happy marriage. He's got two amazing kids. He has an awesome work life balance, um, so on and so forth. And I'm like, ah, and then this guy's saying, here you go. I'm now going to hold you accountable to those things. So the first step was being held accountable to do the stuff that I didn't want to do and not wanting to let that person down. Um, and he was quite blunt and harsh with me on occasions. He's like, right, well, we're, you're paying for today's session, but um, we're cancelling it because all you want to do is talk about, about stuff that isn't important to your business. You think it's important, but it's not. And actually, all we need to talk about is this other stuff. Um, 
and so he did pull that trick on me twice and literally like hit the red button on Skype back then and it ended. I was like, I sat there looking at my laptop screen going. Uh, Who else we know is hung up on people in a meeting that they didn't want to have that conversation with? Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> the other week. <laughs> so that, that was the first thing. The, the second thing is, after a period of time, you actually start to see results from focusing in on those areas. And, you know, often that's a period of months, three to six months would be usual. It's not like a quick overnight success. I mean, if you've left a part of your business at only 10% active, one of the layers of your business at 10% active for a few years, to get it up towards 100% further does take time, effort, energy, focus, so on and so forth. But after a period of time, you start to see results. And interestingly, when I started to see some results, I then actually backed off the things I didn't like, thinking that it was like taken care of. And then, and then my results over a period of time started to d- diminish again. And my mentor said, I, I bet you've stopped putting 14 hours a week into this, haven't you? And I was like, how on earth did you know that? Um, but it was based on the results. It was, you know, so, and so then, you, then you go back at it again, and then the results pick up again. And ultimately, when those results start taking you closer to what it is you want to achieve in your life, and, you know, money will be a part of that lifestyle, family experiences, you know, ego, all sorts of things are a part of that. Um, when that's, when those results start taking you obviously closer to those things you want, um, actually you're like, wow, what, what if I just drop more of that other shit I thought was important and just focus on this stuff more? Could I get those results faster? I mean, could I take a, a five-year goal and turn it into a one-year goal or a two-year goal? Um, and, and, and so I suppose then I became obsessed by those things in terms of I, I didn't want to work a 14-hour workday seven days a week for the rest of my years. I wanted to work I wanted to guide on one or two trips a month. And I then, when I was back in the office, wanted to do four or five hours in the office a day and then get out of the office and go kayaking for myself and spend it with my wife. I mean, that was the, that was it. So it's not like I had some, I want to make a hundred million dollars goals or anything like that. And so that like, why would you want to wait for five years to achieve that quality of work home life? When actually, if you focus on the right things, you could be you could be there next month, next year. Who knows? Um, and so it kind of became like a, uh, a like we said in the previous episode. I learned to like beer at one point in time. My first mouthful of beer, I almost spat it out. Um, but I I, I learned to like I beer. to drink beer. That's it. I persevered what on the man. beer. What a hero! mostly because I wanted to emulate my dad who appeared to like beer. Now, the interesting thing is when I spoke to my dad about 10 years ago, I'm like, dad, did you like beer when, when you had your first glass of beer and, you know, you, you copied your dad and he's like, oh, it tasted foul, but you know, I didn't want to let my, my dad down. So I, I, I learned to like it and I didn't want to let my dad down. So I persevered to learn to like it. And um, so we can learn to love or like absolutely anything um, but I think there's the hurdle of accountability to start with. Yeah, and I think that the, the two things, what you've just described is my biggest fallibility or my biggest weakness I have personally, mm. which is patience. I'm bloody, not that you can stop nodding now, idiot. I am such an impatient human being. I'm one of those annoying. I want everything to happen done yesterday. I think it's something that I've had to learn learn in business, and it's something we've made mistakes in the past because I've sort of pushed you to move on before we're ready. I think it it is something that, but so I think it's something you need to be cognizant of. But I think also because it's something that you need to be aware about, which is. At what point are you actually procrastinating? Like, because we talk, we talk a lot about um, 
manufacturers, I, people I, are obsessed about their product, but they're trying to make I'm that assuming, final tweet for hours. I, I'm assuming that you're not talking about the pra- procrastination where somebody sits knowing they should be busy but does nothing. Are, are you no. talking about like the active procrastination where you're busy being busy but never really achieving what you want to achieve? Yeah, and, and busy, yes, exactly that. And busy making tweaks to something that is going to make absolutely zero difference to your business or to your customer or to the experience or the service. You're just doing it. So there's that impatient stuff, but there's also that procrastination out of fear. I think it's all about is the, the two things work quite closely together. I think. I'm very impatient. I want to get things done yesterday. And there's a reality out there that um, – there's another business out there, similar to yours, who's listening, who offers a 50% quality version of what it is you sell, who, because they are obsessed by the thing we mentioned in the first episode and what we're going to follow on with in this episode now, actually, we're never going to get uh, to. we are going to get to it. Right? We are going to get there. Um, actually, they're making far more money. They're achieving far more of their goals. They're, but maybe they're even doing a disjustice to the outdoors because people are going out there with a substandard product. And it's all because, though, they are obsessed with their customer, as we mentioned in the previous episode, and they know how to go and take what they have and put it in front of a customer where the customer feels exceptionally stupid if they do not purchase it. Um and so they're, they're, they're taking your customers because you're not obsessed with your customers. And importantly for this episode, because you're not actually obsessed with the way you use your time. And for me, um, these two things are the obsessions you must have in place is obsessed with my customers and obsessed with how I use my time to get the results that I want to get my results, the results that I want to get. Yeah, 100%. And I think when we say time, we're not, we don't mean 60 hours a week. How do you allocate every single minute over 60 hours a week of work? It's about what is it that you want to achieve? How much time are you willing to allocate it? And how are you ensuring that you are obsessing about that time so that you're prioritizing how to spend that time on the things that's going to have the biggest impact on your business? Absolutely. And so, you know, if um, and we, we only have so many hours in a week, so many hours in a month, so many hours in a year. And, and as Mark says, you know, this isn't we're not saying you need to work, seven, work more. Um, we're definitely not saying that. What we're actually saying is that that in, in my mind, anything that's to do with attracting more customers, um, developing awareness with new customers, servicing current customers, increasing customer love in your business or brand, anything that's linked to that, um, you know, podcasts, magazine articles, interviews, whatever it might well be, um, anything that's linked to that has to be number one when it comes to how you prioritize and how you use your time. Because those two things linked together, customers and time, are the things that will allow you to sell as many products as you could ever want to sell. Um, but if you go into the office or the shop or wherever it is on a Monday morning, and the first thing you do is pick up the product and say, how could I make it better? Or what am I going to work on with this this week? Um, actually, you're leading yourself up the garden path to a, to a no result end of the week. Um, and, and so I just think... This time thing is weird because, you know, Mark, there's so many books out there that say, you know, allocate a task to every 15 minutes of the day, you know, blah, blah. Even if you're watching a movie, watch it with purpose to come up with a business idea. Um, I, I personally like to call bullshit on that. You know that I do, I come up with most, most of the best development stuff for the business. I come up with when? DIY. That's it. I'm, I'm renovating a house, renovating a workshop, doing the garden, wh- whatever else. Um, and, and so am I wasting time by doing that stuff myself? I'd argue no, because I think Mark, most outdoor business owners, most people are quite similar to me. If you dump them in front of a laptop and say, come up with great ideas about how to get more customers involved in your business, we just look at the laptop and go, uh? 
Yeah. Um, and the best thing that happens out of could happen out of that circumstance is you end up taking what other businesses do and trying to replicate it for your business. Well, that's not creative problem solving. That's just copying what other people do, plain and simple. That's just plagiarism. And actually, you need time, space, and silence, no music, et cetera, to actually come up with stuff that is unique and different that will help you engage with customers more. And so maybe time usage could be um, go for a hike. Um, maybe it could be go for a hike with new people who hike that you've never met before and just have a conversation with them and listen to what it is they talk about. Maybe that could be a thing. I don't know. Um, it's great usage of time because it's helping you engage that time in the pursuit of more customers. I think it's what we're, what, what we're not advocating is laziness, just using it as an excuse to do something. What we're saying is, Two things. One is really think about what are the key questions. And that's what you do a lot in your DIY normally is you pick one question that you just want to think about and you almost obsess about that question while you're doing things to see where it takes you. And you have you have no defined outcome or end game. You just literally meander on a journey. So I think the first thing is to leverage time by trying to answer key questions. But secondly, before you even start down that journey, you need to know yourself that allows you to achieve what it was you achieved. Like for me, I wouldn't have the same output for the business DIYing because that, that's not where I get really stimulated to do my thinking. I get stimulated to do my thinking either when I'm swimming or when I'm on a hike. So get me in a swimming pool or get me in a water swimming and I'll come out of the water like you do coming out of DIY. It's not wrong, it's just different. Get me on a hike. So I think ask yourself, where do I feel in the right mental space to answer the right question? And then what question do I need to answer? And then just stop trying to think what other people expect of you or what is the norm and do what is right for you as an individual. Like I never criticize Rob for spending time DIY because even though there is no direct output to the benefit of we get outdoors like i don't see a new email or i don't see anything else who gives a shit because i freaking yeah sorry you just froze there for a second just repeat that last bit again sorry it's like yeah i I don't get frustrated if you're not in front of the laptop achieving something that's directly beneficial to the to the to the business, such as an email or a presentation or something, because the value of the voice notes I get when you finish is probably a hundred times more valuable to We Get Outdoors than that one email that you just sat in front of the laptop trying to write. That's it. That's it. It's, um, so, so time, um, unless you value your time specifically, um, other people, well, they won't value time either which means you'll end up with tire kickers in your business who want to waste your time and not buy, as opposed to real customers who want to actually swipe their credit card and get your product and service and, and get going with it ASAP. Because often your customers end up mirroring you. And so um, if, if you don't value that time and how it's allocated, why would your customers uh, value it as, as well? But um, And I think it's really important what Mark was saying there. Um, all too often, I think we get obsessed by um, we, we we set up a business for all sorts of reasons, and then we go and turn our business back into a job by trapping ourselves at a workbench or trapping ourselves at a laptop or in a workshop or wherever, wherever it may well be from eight till five Monday through Friday, and then have a weekend. Surely the reason we all set up our own businesses is to not have a job and not be trapped anymore. Surely that's the reason. So who cares if somebody says, well, well you don't work very hard because you go kayaking on Wednesday mornings. So I'm part of my French, but fuck them. Like they are just going to trap you back in your business again. If, if swimming is what Mark does to go and come up and answer questions and solve questions or whatever it may solve problems in the business, then Mark should allocate an hour a day every day to being swimming because that's of real value to the business. That takes us forwards. Um, 
And I know in a big business that your line manager or your boss wouldn't permit you the time to go and go swimming for an hour every day on company time, but that's because they're stupid and they don't own their own business. Now, you're not stupid. You do own your own business. And so we have to redefine what productivity is. And for me, productivity for a business owner is solving problems for customers for a profit. So how are you solving those problems at a better level the whole time? And understand that if there was a list of 10 thing, 10 ways of solving, product, uh, solving problems for a customer, probably your product is one out of 10. And there's probably nine other fit parts of your business that need to function amazingly well in order to truly solve the whole of that problem. Like if somebody swipes their credit card today, they probably want your product or service tomorrow. So how are you going to go and actually get it to them as quickly as humanly possible? And then how are they going to feel loved when they do get it? And, and in what time frame are they going to feel loved? And in what ways? Um, I just think all of this comes back to understanding that there's a balance of time allocation throughout our life. And how you choose to allocate that time will be directly linked to what outcomes or what success you get at the end of it. Um, and if you're not getting what you want out of your business, it's probably due to one of these two reasons from the last episode and this episode, not enough love for customers and a, I won't say incorrect, a, um, a usage of time that needs to be adjusted um, in order for you to go and get more of the results that you need. I think that is uh, an incredible piece of advice that we should end this session on. Cool. Now, so if if um, if people are struggling, Mark, with what it is that they can do with these two obsessions that we say that business owners need to have to be successful, customers and time. Um, and somebody's like, well, I'm not too quite too sure where to start. And I don't even really know how I use my time at the moment. And uh, and I really want some advice and guidance or, or I want some support. What are two, two things they could go do or three things even to help themselves? Well, I think before they even get that, I think the first thing they've got to do is realize do they and put their head in the sand and carry on doing what they're doing or they actually want to make a change in their business and their life. So let's assume they are making a decision and they want to make some change. Well, the first thing they could do is get an opportunity to, to come and tell your story to tens of thousands of outdoor enthusiasts by coming on our outdoor business promo series. And the link for that is below. You click on the link and it'll take you to a help page. And then you can go and book in a time that suits you to come on our podcast. The second thing is, if you want to discuss more of this in detail and how it applies to your business, then Rob, um, when he's not DIYing, is giving three hours a week of his time for free for anybody who wants to have a cool conversation with him about their business, um, where they are, what they want to do, and what they want to achieve. And click on the same link and it'll take you to the help page. And there is another one that you can go and access time to Rob's diary. Um, that's a big two. What's the third one? Well, I, the third one is, if you get all of this and you understand it fully, um, what, why bother talking to us? Go go start doing it and, um, and put it into practice and then um, comment on the comment below what successes you're having or, or drop us an email or a direct message to one of our social media channels and saying, hey, thanks for that. Um, this works and here's what it is that I'm getting out the other side because um, we love to hear your success stories. Um, that's it from us this week. I hope that's been a useful part two um, of two things to be obsessed with. And um, yeah, please like this episode. Please subscribe to the channel and why not give it a big share at the same time? We look forward to seeing you next week.